Walter's going to narrate the film as we play it. The first pictures start out at the uh, power plant, which is uh, some of the buildings connected to that, the laundry building. This is aerial view from the top of a mountain of the whole camp. This is another view taken, uh, an aerial view. It's some of the Dixon cottages. cottages and the chapel in the background. These were designed by Dr. Dixon. Who was Dr. Dixon? He was, Dr. Dixon was the first director of health Pennsylvania. This is more aerial view of the surrounding mountains. It shows the background of this whole area. This section is the golf course which was built by the health department. Golf course for patients? For staff. Golf course was for staff and employees. This is still more of the aerial view. Here's a closer picture of the golf course area. These pictures were taken from the Snowy Mountain Fire Tower, which would be south of the sanatorium. picture was in the cemetery. Is this where patients were buried? Patients were buried here. This is the children's hospital. It was originally for patients that were too sick to be out taking care of themselves. And then during World War I up until 1923, it was filled by veterans of World War I that had been gassed in the service. And then in 1924, why the children were moved in. What is this building? That, that building was the infirmary building. These are open air pavilions on the main hospital grounds. Beside all these cottages. There was 56 of this type of cottages and besides in these among these cottages was open air pavilions with chairs that the patients sat in for hours and hours. Were the cottages was, heated? The cottages had steam heat. In the center aisle of the cottage, in the hallway, there wasn't any heat in the rooms unless you, you had the door open. And this is nurses from the nurses training it ran from 1924 to 1935. They had a two-year training course for nurses to be trained for TB patients. This is a store that's on the uh, main grounds where supplies could be newspapers, uh, anything along that line that they need stationary, anything along that line could be bought at the store. 
for the patient? For the patient. This is a chapel built in 1911. This was the original, one of the first nurses' home buildings. Later on, it was used as office buildings. This was the first uh, large dining room. And these are all patients that are bathing in the sun, fresh air and sunlight. Are male and female segregated? Yes. There was an upper, what they called upper and lower men's camp, and there was an upper and lower women's camp. They were a different what section. That, what is that man doing there? He is probably the, uh, either a doctor or a, an aide that's just supervising, uh, make sure that everybody is getting sunned and and keep in order, really. We examined the patients regular. They would be out and, and doctors would examine them to make sure that everything that was possible at that time could be done for them. These patients hold, are holding mirrors with the sunlight at their back shining in the mirror and then the light goes into their mouth. To, it was a way that they felt would cure their throats, heal up their throats with the sunlight. And this was the assembly building that had been used for a theater, it was a theater, and also there was a school, a business training school, and that building had burnt. And then about two years later, there was a new building. To replace that one. And there's a lot of deer in the area, and some of them would get tame, come right in around the cottages. This would be at the Monada train station, that would be about five miles from here at the foot of the mountain. These were children that they'd bring in here in the summer mostly from the cities. They were called fresh air children. And they would stay in a building back of the children's hospital. It was a long building back of the children's hospital, screened on the sides. And they would stay there for the summer months. And just uh, felt that the fresh air and the good food would be a help for them. Everybody was brought up in trucks from the train station to the top of the mountain. And then the children were all examined when they come in to check for any diseases. wouldn't start a epidemic for the whole area. Everybody was tested. They received a few shots which they didn't care for. <laughs> oh, 
all these tests were made before these children were put in with any of the other any of the other children. Everybody received a complete haircut. What was the reason for the haircut? Uh, the haircut was because some of the children had had lice when they came or other skin diseases, and they could they could check for this and treat it immediately. And, this is in the bathhouses. Everybody had their own toothbrush that they kept with them, and there was a there was containers in there that had a tooth powder in that you just went to the container, put powder on your brush, and, and there was one container for everyone. Uh, there would be containers. There would probably be a dozen of these containers to each bath house. You just held the brush underneath and you pushed a, a button and the right. powder came down onto the brush. Right. And here and there are just examining the, the children as they looking to see what for condition they are in. children wear supplied by the center? All clothing except your shoes were, and socks were supplied by the state. All clothing was supplied. You, you brought your own shoes and you, uh, if you had any repair on your shoes, why that, uh, you had to pay for the repair of your shoes and your own stockings, everything else uh, was supplied by the state. You paid for your own haircuts and your shoe repair. Some of these children were very thin when they came. But with the food and the fresh air here, it did have a way of fattening you pretty quick. This is the, was twice the day, this was milk in the cans. One of the men from the dining room would bring out the, the milk you, you went through, you picked up your, your cup, filled it, and then there was a container you put the cups in, they were taken back and washed, and then they'd be ready for the next time that the milk cart came around. Milk was bought by the state from local farmers in this area and then they had their own pasteurizing plant here and, and of course all the milk was in re refrigeration and it was cool. These are the children with their sunbathing and the cloth over their face was just to keep the sun out of their out of their face and their eyes. And they would lay so long in the one way and then they would turn and they but you gradually got a suntan without getting sunburnt. The nurses, doctors would watch some people burn much easier than other ones and some could only be out a short time. There was a lot of swings, seesaws, sliding boards, and this building was located on a hill, and in the winter time, there was probably two, three hundred sleds there for sliding. The 
that you were out every day, yeah, unless you were real sick, real bad cold or something, you were out every day. This is shown in one of the uh, rooms. And everybody makes their own bed and they're ready for inspection as the nurse and the doctors come through, check everyone. If there's anyone feels bad that day, this is when you tell them and you're taking them to the clinic. They check the hands, the fingernails. They make sure you've washed, they make sure you have your, your hands clean. They check your beds to make sure the bed is made properly. There's probably 20 beds to a ward. As you notice, the children all saluted when the doctor and the nurse left and when they enter. In this building, the boys were all on the second floor and the girls were on the first floor. And at the north end of this building was an auditorium, which was used for a, for a chapel, for a, a uh, theater, anything of that type. And on the second floor was classrooms, because these children were all still in school. And you went to school a half day, four day or five days a week, half day at a time. And you had practically the same classes that you would have had in schools at home. These are more tests that, that's given regular to make sure that everyone is okay. Besides all the swings and the playground equipment, there was Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts, there was movies, uh, religious services every weekend. One of the punishments, if, if you didn't do everything that you were expected to do, or if you were a troublemaker, one of your punishments was that you didn't get to go to the Saturday afternoon movie. You had to stay in bed while the movie was on. That seemed to be harder on most people than most any other punishment they could have received.
Another thing for the girls was sewing classes. They were taught to make their own clothing for doll babies. There was a lot of organizations, brought toys and uh, doll babies and all kinds of toys in a, at Christmas time. It was given out to all. Everybody received a prize. There was a lot of games brought in by different organizations. And these were things that you, games that you had to for play. Marbles was another. It's a lot of marbles. Everything was along that line was furnished by different organizations. And this was every eating, everyone had their temperature taken. And that was recorded. This was in the area of, of the uh, sick, sick of wards. It wasn't so much so in, in the other part of the hospital. hospital would hold 240 patients and most of the time it was filled. It was started in 19, first children came in from Hamburg, Pennsylvania in 1924. That was mostly a way to settle arguments. You got a chance to put the boxing gloves on. But they made sure no one got hurt too bad. Girls like the boxing gloves. This is more in the playground area. These are all still the fresh air kids, none of the real, none of the children that had tuberculosis? No, there isn't any tuberculosis children in this, in this area. Now, there was children in the main children's hospital that would be there for maybe a couple years, two, three years, till they got better, but what they call the fresh air children were only brought in through the summer months. They'd be here about three months and then they went back. If some of them were real bad, then they would be kept in the, the main hospital and they would stay there until they were able to go home. This hospital right here was closed in January 1940. At that, at that time they were moved closer to the main hospital into a new building which had been built in 1938 and 39 and and later years why this building 
was completely torn down. And the pool was inside? Yes. And these were inside pools. 1936, there was uh, another section built to this building for uh, polio patients. And they had uh, hot baths, massage tables, it's like that in there for the polio children. But from the children moved from this building to the new building in 1940, the uh, polio ward was uh, moved somewhere else. I don't know where it was moved to. But they, those children didn't come over to the new building. Most everybody preferred the old building over the new. You were watched too close in the new building. <laughs> we had more fun at the other place. <laughs> so you were there during that transition? Yes, I was. I was there and moved into the new building. But they do put put weight on you with extra good meals and health and everything. I came here, I weighed 76 pounds. I left, I weighed 114. Now this is in the winter and the sliding area. And you could slide for a long distance down that. Yeah, there were a few trees you had to watch, but there was a long distance you could slide clear down. Well, it's all grown up now, but you could go clear down to the main road from at the, at the hospital. But regardless of the weather, you were out and every day. You did bring your own top coats. That was one thing you, you furnished your own top coat with many snowball bottles. From the classrooms, which was above the auditorium, all these children were in school. And you went to school a half four, five days a week, a half day at a time. And the classroom was above the auditorium and it was so close to the mountain you could look right out the window and see deer walking around right out from the building. Again, we're back to the milk line. And that man that's running the milk line is a neighbor of mine right now. <laughs> he worked for the hospital at that time. And you were taken on, on hikes. You would go out camping, a lot of times you would take a little bag of food 
people were going to be out close to a meal time, and everybody had their own picnic lunch with them. You could walk the road without much trouble at that time. There wasn't traffic like there is today. And we just walked the main roads. This is a co-ed activity, both boys and girls? Yeah, on this would be, yes. Both boys and girls would be on this. You were taught how to make your own bed. We'd be clean linen twice a week or more if it was necessary. These are different nurses. There was a nurse's home built right to the south of the main of this main ho children's hospital. They had their own nurse's home building right there. It, this hospital had its own power plant, its own kitchen, dining room. Even the nurses like to use the swings. Did the nurses stay for a long time, or was there a lot of turnover where they would quit and they wouldn't come in or become ill? A lot of nurses stayed. They would marry other employees here and lived here. And there's a lot of the nurses still that came here as nurses, married somebody, and still live here in the area. There was a lot of patients came here, and when they were cured, they went to the nurses' training course that they had here on the grounds, and then they stayed here as nurses. Some went to other tuberculosis hospitals throughout the state to nurse, but a lot of them stayed here. And, like I say, a lot of them still live here. Came from different parts of the state, and they still live here in the area. Are these girls or boys? That's probably, probably girls and boys both there. Girls would run uh, around without tops? Uh, no. The girls would have had to, would have, have tops. Uh, this is one of the of the buses they had at that time that they would take children for rides. Some of these are leaving. We've been here for the summer. Some of these are leaving, going back. They go to Mount Alta, which is five miles down the mountain from here. They get a train from there to Hagerstown, and then from Hagerstown they would take another train to Philadelphia, Washington, Baltimore. Most would be, most that came in here would be from Pennsylvania. There would be some from other states, but most all was from Pennsylvania. And when you went out on walks, you lined up sort of in a military style, and everybody traveled together. raising of the flag. Every morning, eating, when the flag went up or the flag came down, you, you were out for raising or lowering of the flag. The 
a lot of different little activities like that was to keep to keep you, your mind occupied, keep you out of other troubles. They all appear to be dressed up. Do you know where they're these, going? These are, these are children that are leaving. They've been here for the summer and they're leaving and going back home. They're getting on the, boarding the train right now. Now people that came here like myself that lived, well, they lived about 40 miles from here. Why well, my parents brought me and then they came and picked me up and took me took me home. That appears to be the end of the film. Yes, I believe that is the end.